about where Exhibio Labs fits in the market. Uh, you know, we think about DevOps at enterprise scale. And, you know, everyone is saying, hey, I do DevOps in development, I'm pushing code as fast as I can, but we think about how do you push code all the way to production. So that's our focus. You know, the, just a little background on Exhibio Labs. Um, you know, from, from our standpoint, the types of customers that we work with are Expedia, KeyBank, TD Ameritrade, you know, so large, complex environments that have waterfall teams, they have agile teams, they have mainframes, they have distributed. So you, we got to think about how do you help these organizations deliver applications to production faster? And, you know, when you think about DevOps, it's about people, process, tools, right? We love this, uh, this slide, right? Every single one of these tools, they do a specific thing for you know, uh, different use cases in the organization. If you talk to anybody out there, they say, I do DevOps. And, and we want to say, what does that really mean? Like, what is DevOps? If you think about you know, Jenkins, their continuous integration. They're about, how do I build faster? How do I you know, test, unit test? How do I build faster? People can then take Jenkins and say, all right, it's under the covers, I can script that out and then deliver to you know, deployments, to other types of functions with inside Jenkins to, you know, uh, you know, to try to deliver value to, uh, towards the organization. But the strength around Jenkins is about continuous integration. What we think about is as you do those things of you know, bleeding into different parts of where these tools kind of fit, what happens is you create that technical debt uh, that Troy talked about because you're creating unicorns with inside your environment. What we think about is how do you connect the people, the process, the tools to create standardization that everybody can get on, right? So that you can in incorporate it so that you're using the right tool for the right job, but you're also including the process and the people so that you can deliver applications all the way to production. We're not about delivering it to development or QA. We gotta think about what is that entire process from when you think about the creating the story, the epic, whatever that is, all the way to when you build the software, when you actually deliver it in production. Right? This is where, you know, this is the way that we think about it. We have two products. One is release orchestration or ARA or enterprise DevOps. There's so many different terms that are out there. Um, but we think about it as you have to herd the cats, as Kevin said. You've got you to go from plan to operate. And you're going to have teams that have mainframes. You're going to have the teams that have distributed. Even undistributed, there's Java, there's .NET. There's all different types of applications. But at the end of the day, you're planning, you're coding, you're building, you're testing, you're releasing, and then you're operating that, uh, that software out there. And you've got to be able to connect the dots across the entire, uh, that entire landscape. We have Excel release that sits on top. It helps you coordinate. It integrates with all the tools that are out there. For example, with CompuOne and ISPW, they do mainframe deployments and SCM for the, for the mainframe. They created a, a product that exposed an API. We quickly integrated with it. It took a half a day to be able to integrate with the CompuOne suite so that we can then incorporate that into the entire process. Right? So that's what the modern tools on the mainframe are able to, to help us. But we also deal with all the other tools that are out there as well. So Excel release is coordinating the people, the process, the tools as you, as you move forward. We also have a deployment on, uh, automation solution. It's called Excel Deploy. Essentially what that's doing is rather than your developers creating technical debt by writing their own deployment scripts and those things, and then trying to incorporate them into a Puppet, a Chef, an Ansible, a Jenkins, whatever that script runner is that you're gonna, that you're gonna uh, look at, we say there's gotta be a standard way of how do you deploy to containers, how do you deploy to, you know, on the distributed side, how do you deploy to Java, how do you deploy to different components. What we've done is we created standards so that we can automatically generate the script. So we take automation, 
the next step of automating the generation of the scripts that you need to do a deployment in dev, test, or QA. So it's massive value because you're not creating unicorn deployments uh, and trying to orchestrate it yourself by creating technical debt uh, with, and scripting it out yourself. Or trying to create technical debt where you're building your own workflows to be able to do, uh, to be able to do that. We think about standardization. Standardization so you can actually go faster. And if you, and if you are trying to create a, you know, in your process a number of unicorn releases or unicorn deployments, then everybody's gonna be different, you're not gonna be able to standardize. And in large organizations, the way that you go faster is you can standardize and then you can put people on the right train. I'm not saying that everybody's gonna fit the exact model, like in Kevin's example, you have people that are still doing everything from the manual task perspective. What we give you the ability to do is standardize. Kevin hit the nail on the head when he said, you have uh, you know, people that weren't actually following the process of doing a rollback. Or you know, how do I back out if something happens in production? That's risk to the organization. Now we can actually put people on the train if they're still a manual process to be able to make sure that they're following the standards of the organization. By st and then using the data, so that goes to the last piece, which is DevOps intelligence, is using the data to make decisions on where do you need to make the next change. Right? Everybody wants to go faster, everyone wants to automate. It's, you're not gonna be able to do that overnight, and you need to make bets and you need to make decisions, but you can't do it based on gut feel. You have to do it based on data. And what we're able to provide you is that visibility across your entire pipelines so you can say, you know what, it's this testing uh, you know, challenge that I have. It's still a manual testing, and we're doing it in serial, right? How can I then make that into a, you know, how can I then speed that up? That takes three months. How can I speed that up so that it's only one month? I can use DevOps techniques, which is the spin-up environments, you know, deploy the application to those environments, and I can have three manual testing teams do that. You just saved a month off of a release. Massive value because I'm now giving you the data to be able to say that's your biggest bottleneck on why you can't release, right? I can also show you where you have, uh, you know, releases that are gonna crash or uh, are, are, gonna, are gonna hurt each other as well. And that goes for, you know, mainframe, you know, uh, your distributed or other components within the organization. I can show you where those are gonna collide and that's the, that's the value of the DevOps intelligence, so it gives you that data so you can make better decisions, right? And I think it's really important that the only way to do that is to understand the people, the process tools as you're moving forward, and then you can create standards. Some may say, my CI tool is gonna to be Jenkins, but I still have a .NET team. They're gonna use TFS, right? Or uh, another technology to do their builds. So you, you know, if you rip everything out and you try to you know, take something and force it down, it's not gonna work, but you still need to be able to get control over those processes. That's where Excel Release gives you that, that, uh, that, uh, that capability, as well as the intelligence of saying, I use three different CI tools. Which one is the best? Which one's the most efficient? Who has the best knowledge? And, it, and you might have an idea today, but you're gonna use data to be able to d define these are the ones that I'm able to actually go faster with, which is really important. Right, and we've seen a ton of slides, right? Of here's all the tools that are in my environment. So as you go from plan, code, build, test, I go back to that DevOps uh, you know, periodic table, there's tons of tools that are embedded into each one of those, uh, those components. Some, of, some tools are missing based on your organization and your process, um, and we can account for that as well. Huge, there's huge value in just understanding you know, where those gaps are so that you've got your baseline, as Kevin said. Here's a baseline of where you are, and now as you add in automation, now you can actually justify, here's the, uh, uh, you know, here's the value that DevOps is bringing to the organization, right? The biggest thing that we think about for uh, enterprise DevOps is to be able to do it at scale for an organization, right? We have one very large uh, financial organization, credit card company. They have 5,000 users on the platform. They don't use our deployment tool. We have integrated with one of their other deployment tools, but they have 5,000 
uh, members on it because they've standardized their process of how they, not only do they, uh, you know, the process of delivering software, but they've standardized the process of how to onboard people onto the platform. Because you think about the, the logistics and the politics and those types of things that go into changing the organization, they had to come up with a way to be able to standardize and make that work for them. And that's, they're using our product, it's kind of like we're eating our own dog food to be able to stand up our own, uh, our own product uh, within the organization. But they're seeing the value because they've standardized the process and now they can actually have people jump on board. And some of them are on the slow train. Right? They're on the pipeline that's just you know, a manual process. Others are on the, the fast train. They're using containers. They're using you know, the, the newer types of technologies that, that are out there. And we're, we're able to bridge those gaps so that we can offer a platform that gives each one of the constituents the, uh, the ability to join. Then they're using data to actually make decisions of where do I go next. And I think that's the, uh, that's the important part uh, you know, that, that we see. So I've got a quick, um, you know, this is the, this is our products. And I'm gonna go over to Excel release first, right? So I talked about people process tools. This is within the product. You're moving from development, test, to prod, right? Each one of these blocks are tasks that need to take place. Some of them could be manual tasks, some can be automated tasks. And all we're doing is we're connecting those things together so that we can actually uh, you know, enable someone. If they're checking in code, it automatically opens up a change request. Then it goes to a bill, uh, Jenkins to do the build. Then it goes into updating comments. Those are all automated tasks. Then you get into the deployment side. We integrate with ISPW so that when we need to deploy a component to the mainframe, we deploy that component to the mainframe. If we need to now deploy a distributed component, it's deploying with Excel Deploy to that, uh, to that environment. And then you can use it to make decisions. So just, you know, so we can integrate and put a quality gate with SonarCube. So you can make decisions based on feedback from, uh, you know, SonarCube that this is the, this is the uh, you know, code coverage that you've got. I've got 80%, I can move forward. And all of this is the dev cycle can happen many, many, many times during uh, you know, this cycle. And then it's ready to move over to, you know, I'm going to move it into the QA phase. This is a really simple example, but it just gives you an idea. Now you're moving it. You're waiting for uh, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, approvals. And this is something that you can either go to JIRA, you can go to ServiceNow, you can go to you know, whatever your homegrown tool is to be able to say, do I have approval to move to the next phase? Then it deploys to that environment. Then it, and, and that environment's mainframe and, and distribute it. But if nothing changed here, it can still move forward. Huge value. So it's making those decisions and it's being able to execute. It's performing the automated tasks. And it's not just waiting on one task, you can run things in parallel. Then you move over to production. And it's the same thing. It's going through and executing these things uh, depending on what the requirements are, right? If you have SOX compliance, if you have, uh, you know, you have to put different components into the plan to be able to, you're going to be able to add those tasks. Um, and based on feedback, it can actually spawn out additional type of releases based on condition feedback that you get from uh, the actual release. So it's able to be dynamic with inside the organization based on, uh, you know, once we execute something, we get feedback, we make a decision, we move to the next step based on what that, uh, what that feedback was. So it's always looking for that feedback loop. But in the, the entire time, what we're doing is collecting data, right? And trying to understand for each one of these components where the risk is, who's, uh, you know, wh where's the usage? What's the, what's the tickets? I can pull from ServiceNow, Jira, and actually connect into those tools. I'm not telling you to replace everything in your environment. I'm saying leverage the tools that you have in your environment for what they're made for, right? And that's, that's you know, you don't want to be able to bleed off into, you know, creating technical debt so that your 
uh, so that, you, that you're trying to bend the tool to do something that it's not meant to do. That's, a, that's huge value that we bring because I'm going to orchestrate the right tool for the right job. And that, that's an important part here. Now, I, we talked about at the beginning right, of this release flow, right? I go out to ISPW to do a mainframe deployment. Then I go out and I do a, a, a deployment and test, right? As you move from one environment to the next, those environments, the infrastructure changes behind it. You, you have one box in dev, you have 15 boxes in, uh, you know, in uh, test, and your production, you have load balancers, you have all these different things that are out there when you think about when you're gonna actually put that, uh, that build out onto those servers to be able to run. Excel deploy, as I said, we're trying to get rid of the technical debt so you're not scripting out those deployments. We've just modeled out. Here's what the application looks like. This is what the environment looks like. And then we go to standard plugins to say, if I see WebSphere, if I see JBoss, if I see Docker, if I see AWS, if I see, based on what that infrastructure is gonna look like, it's gonna pull out the right content from our plugins to be able to execute and put that software on, in that environment. I'll do a quick example uh, so that you can understand this. So in this example, I'm just taking one package that I created. It has a number of different components. I'm gonna put it in production and I'm gonna continue. And if I hit preview, what it's done is it's automatically built out. How do I deploy that application to the environment? And the interesting thing is, I didn't write a piece of code, it was just pulling from standard plugins that we have um, built over time. And if you have something nuanced in your environment, you can add that in as well. Um, but it's then built out, here are the steps that I, need to, uh, that I need to do to be able to execute that. And it orders them and, and addresses it. Interesting thing, everyone says, hey, I wanna change how I deploy, I want a canary deployment. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add in an orchestrator, I save. It automatically generated a new workflow for me. And now it's now deploying per, per container type. That's the Apache, that's JBoss, uh, that's the SQL. So it's now automatically figuring out. You didn't actually have to write all the scripts in behind that and creating technical debt huge value to be able to go faster within the organization. As I said, we think about standardization so that you can go faster. Standardization on the pipelines and then putting the right groups and teams on the right pipelines based on their requirements, as well as standardizing how you actually deploy so that everybody isn't saying, I'm unique, because that's the first thing that every team will tell you is, no, 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 we have to do it this way because, and we can address that um, if there is anything different by adding it to the standards so that you can then, other teams then can leverage that so they don't have to go and write it within their organization. Massive value to be able to, uh, you know, for your, uh, for your organization uh, to be able to go faster. And we don't care, right? We think about on a deployment side, and this is on the distributed, we think about what's the application look, where, what's the environment, and from our standpoint, it's more about you know, we, you just need to tell us where it is, where it goes, and we don't care if it's AWS, Azure, on-prem, containers, those different uh, components, because in the background, that's where we actually have the standards to be able to say, if it's containers, do this, if it's on-prem, do that. And that's the, that's the value that you get from Excel Deploy. So there's two components, right? So not everybody, if I go back to Excel release, not everybody is using Excel deploy to do their deployments. From our standpoint, I still need to orchestrate the best tool for the job. Just because someone made a poor decision to go and do something else from a deployment standpoint, right? I, I don't want to penalize you, but I can still call that out as a task to say, go call out and we do this. We can call out to our competitor to say, go and do the deployment. I have a better, more efficient way, but I'm not, you still need to get it done. And that's where Excel releases to be able to in, uh, inject and hook into it as well. 
right? And that's, that's how we look at the world is so that you can create those standards, measure it so that you can get that feedback loop and say, where do I need to improve on my, uh, on my pipelines? Because at the end of the day, it's a journey. Kevin has teams that are going through it from all manual today and they're on that train and we wanna make sure that we standardize the manual process. Then the second one is, you know, I have some teams that are automated and I can actually show the delta on how fast those teams are going so that individuals can go and sell to the organization the cultural changes that need to happen. And I think that's the value of what, what we bring, right? Huge value in connecting all the pieces together. I believe it's the data so that you can get the feedback. DevOps, continuous delivery, right? It's the continuous feedback so that you can go faster, right? If I look at it, quality is a huge piece. You wanna go faster with quality, right? That's, from, from our standpoint, that's how you get to, you know, be able to automate delivery to, the, uh, to production from a check in the code when it has, hits out in production. That's, you can get there because then you can show that you're building, you know, quality code because you don't want to compromise quality just by going faster. And what we're trying to do is to give the, the folks, the compliance folks, the security folks, the information that they need so that they feel comfortable allowing this to happen. So I think that's, uh, you know, that, that's where I wanted to update. Yeah. Is there any questions?